Now it's my pleasure to present personalized brachytherapy with integration of 3D printing technologies. I'm James Robar. I'm a professor of radiation oncology at Dalhousie University in Halifax and chief of medical physics at Nova Scotia Health. Since approximately 2012, increased accessibility and advancement of additive manufacturing, more commonly known as 3D printing technologies, have been catalysts for the exploration of a broad array of possible applications in radiation oncology. A recent systematic review of the literature by Rooney et al. in 2020 reported that the number of yearly publications involving 3D printing in radiation oncology has approximately doubled since 2015 with 20% of all publications and 44% of all clinical investigations focusing on brachytherapy applications. I have a disclosure and that is that I'm co-founder of Adaptive Medical Technologies, which provides software solutions for patient accessories and 3D printing and radiation oncology. As an overview of this talk, I'd like to first discuss why one might want to incorporate 3D printing into a brachytherapy practice. And then we'll discuss some applications in gynecological brachytherapy, really uh, two different applications. First, the concept of extending the flexibility of standard brachytherapy applicators. And second, the concept of fully customizing applicators or making applicators entirely patient specific. Next, we'll discuss surface brachytherapy applications with 3D printing, then application of 3D printing to permanent seed implants and finally, a few notes on biocompatibility and sterilization. So what is the motivation for incorporating 3D printing into brachytherapy? The first reason might be dosimetric. For example, obtaining some dosimetric advantage by specifying strategic catheter trajectories. One can include interstitial needle paths without too many constraints compared to standard generic applicators. It's possible to combine intracavitary and interstitial applicators. And finally, one can even potentially incorporate imprinted patient-specific shielding to protect organs at risk. The second reason has to do with patient experience and ease of use, for example, enhancing fit for the patient or improving reproducibility. And the third reason is potentially to increase efficiency of the whole process by digitizing manual processes. For example, eliminating hand fabrication of molds or reducing other manual steps, such as attachment of a Freiburg flap to an immobilization system. So now we'll look at a few examples of 3D printing in gynecological brachytherapy. One approach to incorporating 3D printing into gyne brachytherapy is to extend the functionality of standard applicators. This example shows an applicator produced for treatment of locally advanced cervical cancer with extension to the parametria. These investigators base the design on a variant 26 millimeter tandem ring applicator, but the ring channel was removed and replaced by eight equispaced needle guides. An additional five needle guides were included through the vaginal template. The needle angles and extensions were based on MRI treatment planning, as you can see in panels A and D, and multi-jet printing using Visijet M3 crystal, which is USP class six biocompatible was used to produce the final result in panel C. Here's another example of extending the design of a standard applicator in this case, using the adaptive 3D Bracky software for design of an intracavitary interstitial split ring. This application imports needle paths from the TPS, allowing arbitrary angles of up to 45 degrees, as well as definition of the ring radius. The design also incorporates needle guide tube notches to ensure stability. In the work by Basarich et al. presented this year at the World Congress of Brachytherapy, he printed with SLA methods using Biomed Clear or Med AMB resins. The accuracy analysis showed accuracy of on the order of 0.1 millimeters. This 3D printed split ring is actually compatible with Eckerd Ziegler Baybig ring tandem hardware. This year, Camillo from the Shum in Montreal evaluated this method, working towards satisfying the dosimetric requirements of the EMBRACE-2 study. 
They printed with surgical guide and Biomed Clear SLA resins, and then evaluated the mechanical viability pre and post sterilization. They found acceptable tolerances to within about 0.1 millimeters, as well as good repeated functionality of the system. This has been dubbed the Montreal split ring in the literature. A different concept in applying 3D printing to brachytherapy is departing entirely from generic applicators and developing entirely customized patient-specific applicators. Here's a nice example from Len, who described the current limitation of standard applicators in the context of treating locally advanced cervical cancer. This group began with an aqueous gel, allowing distension of the cavity and visualization under MRI, and then design patient-specific molds based on these MRI data. As you can see on this slide, this was applied to a couple of patients with customized and careful definition of both intracavitary source trajectories, as well as interstitial needle guides. Here's a similar example, this time produced with commercial software for the treatment of vaginal cancer, including extensive paravaginal disease. In the upper panel, we can see the design application that allows input from and export back to the treatment planning system. Once complete, the software exports 3D printing data that allows production of the applicator through multi-jet fusion or SLA printing using biocompatible materials. The final applicator is compatible with standard hardware, in this case, a Baybig Tandem. This slide gives the overall workflow of producing such a 3D printed brachytherapy applicator. It begins with scanning a patient with a dummy applicator or after applying packing to delineate and define the intracavitary volume. The second step is a pre-plan in the brachytherapy treatment planning system. The structures defined in the TPS can then be exported through DICOM to 3D brachy. And finally, once that's complete, the applicator can be printed, for example, with SLA or multi-jet fusion, and quality assurance is performed on the applicator. Finally, the applicator is applied to the patient and imaging is repeated, and the final treatment plan is completed with quality assurance and the treatment is delivered. This shows a glimpse into the 3D design software, 3D Bracky, with definition of the structures, including the vault applicator with definition of intracavitary as well as interstitial needle trajectories and the relationship with surrounding target volumes and organs at risk. An emerging idea is enabled by inprinting of high density shielding materials. This is from a recent paper by Semeniuk, who tested the concept by modifying a standard TG186 applicator geometry to include regions that are comprised of minimally attenuating materials, in this case PMMA, as well as shielding materials, such as PLA containing tungsten. This paper actually presents a ray tracing algorithm to design the shielded regions based on the surrounding organs at risk and target volumes. This paper also included an examination of the radiologic properties of 11 different 3D printed materials as compared to water. As you can see on the left, eight of these materials are essentially grouped together with regard to mass attenuation coefficient, at least over the energy range of interest in HDR brachytherapy. The other three, which are printable stainless steel or tungsten loaded polylactic acid, are candidates for shielding materials. On the right, you can see corresponding dose distributions calculated using the eggs Bracky Monte Carlo code, starting from the surface of the test applicator. This shows the attenuation by the tungsten loaded PLA, as well as by the stainless steel. All of the other candidate materials show similar dose distributions. Another area which has seen a lot of development in recent years has been 3D printing in surface brachytherapy. The concept here is to produce 3D printed surface applicators that could replace wax molds or a Freiburg flap. This gives the user control over catheter spacing or distance to the surface. On the left panel, you can see the design software 3D Bracky, which gives warnings, for example, if physical constraints are violated, for example, minimum radius of curvature of the catheter. On the right, you can see an example 
of a surface applicator here for treatment of a basal cell carcinoma of the nose. We can also see some nice clinical case studies in the literature. This was presented by Chittik Prasnik last year at AAPM for the treatment of bilateral lesions on the shins. Each of the two applicators included 13 catheter tunnels to cover multiple planning target volumes. And the applicators were designed in adaptive 3D brachy and then FDM printed using polylactic acid. These investigators observed excellent fit, efficient placement and treatment delivery. Notably, this approach allows customization of trajectories compared to, for example, a Freiburg flap approach. I wanted to mention at least an application in the area of permanent seed implant therapy. The innovation here is the production of 3D printed templates based on patient imaging, whereby an array of needle guides is produced that controls both the needle orientation as well as the depth of needles. There are quite a few reports in the literature on this for treatment of head and neck indications, as well as rectal, pancreatic, liver, thoracic, or brain tumors with iodine-125. And this provides a patient-specific alternative to freehand insertion methods. Finally, a word on biocompatibility and sterilization. The biocompatibility requirements depend on the substrate, for example, intact skin versus mucosal surface versus breached skin. The requirements also depend on the duration of application, for example, less than 24 hours versus greater than 24 hours. And in the US, the USP assesses adverse effects in animal studies, providing categorization in terms of class one to class six. So if we imagine that a, an HDR brachytherapy application would involve less than 24 hour duration, we would need class one, for example, for intact skin, class three for breech skin, or class five for mucosal surfaces. However, the reality today is that there are many class six printable materials, which really is the conservative option. For example, using stereolithography, there's Acura Clearview from 3D Systems or Biomed Clear from Form Labs. Or using multi-jet fusion printing, there's PA12 or TPU from HP. Of course, brachytherapy applicators also need to be sterilizable and to be widely useful, they really should be autoclave or steam sterilizable, for example, at 132 degrees for four minutes. And many SLA and MJF printed materials actually satisfy this requirement but actually most FDM printed materials do not because they might have a softening point or a melting point actually close to that of the steam sterilization. Now to summarize, in gyne brachytherapy, 3D printing is introduced first patient specific extension of standard applicators, for example, tandem and ring systems to include custom needle guides, but also fully customized and patient specific combined intracavitary and interstitial applicators. In surface brachy, custom patient applicators allow control over source trajectories, spacing, as well as distance from the skin, and these can be fabricated to conform to complex surfaces. Software solutions now exist that interface with the TPS and do not require CAD skills. In permanent seed implants, 3D printed templates can form to the skin and eliminate freehand methods. Multi-jet fusion and SLA have been the 3D printing methods of choice generally in application of 3D printing to brachytherapy. And finally, there's now a range of USP class six materials that are both sterilizable as well as biocompatible. Thank you for your attention today. And should you have any questions about implementation of 3D printing into brachytherapy, don't hesitate to contact me.